Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection, otherwise known as DACAP, YouTube channel within a week or two. Just a reminder for those of you that have recently joined us, your microphone will be on mute until the end of the presentation when we will open the lines for questions. You are welcome to type questions into the chat box as we move through the presentation and we will answer those at the end as well. All right, let's get started. Today's webinar will cover Wisconsin's commercial feed tonnage reporting and is presented by DACCAP's feed program staff. My name is Robbie Personet. I'm the manager of the agrochemical program section. Today in order will be Danielle Keller, our licensing and permit program associate, Stephanie Statz, our feed and fertilizer sampling and labeling specialist, and Heather Bartley, our feed specialist. One last reminder before we get started. We have muted everyone and we will unmute you at the end of a, at the end for a live question and answer session. Again, as we move along, feel free to submit your questions in the chat box and one of us will address the questions at the end of the webinar. Today, we will start with a review of the tonnage requirements according to statute and rule, then move to the regu relevant regulatory terms and definitions. We will cover a few examples of reporting tonnage at a high level, and then we'll wrap up with the resources that are available for tonnage reporting. First, Danielle Keller will start by covering the tonnage requirements according to regulation. All right, my name is Danielle. Uh, before getting into tonnage reporting, let's review who is required to be licensed. Any person who is uh, manufacturing in the state of Wisconsin or distributing commercial feed in or into the state of Wisconsin is required to hold a valid commercial feed license issued by DACAP. This also applies to persons whose name and address appears on the label of a commercial feed license as the guarantor of that feed. Distributors are also required to be licensed with a couple of exceptions. <clears throat> Anyone who distributes commercial feed as it was packaged and labeled by a licensed manufacturer or distributor does not need a license. Entities that distribute bulk commercial feed as it was manufactured and labeled by a licensed manufacturer or distributor and repackage the bulk or commercial feed into smaller containers does not need a feed license. The exception to not needing a feed license for repackaging bulk feed into smaller containers is when multiple bulk feeds are commingled and repackaged. In this case, a license is required. Lastly, entities that distribute only custom feed, <clears throat> excuse me, custom feed using ingredients purchased from other licensed manufacturers or distributors do not need a license. To clarify, Stephanie will cover this in a few slides. Retailers are exempt from licensing. When we talk about retailers, we are referring to entities that merely purchase and resell feed manufactured and labeled by a third party feed company. We also want to clarify that with statute changes, brokerages and distribution businesses that are first to distribute in or into the state would require a commercial feed license. This is a chance that those entity there is a chance that though these entities may have been able to conduct business in the past without needing to be licensed. We look forward to working cooperatively and notifying anyone who may not have needed a license in the past, but may need one going forward. Shifting back to tonnage, keep in mind that inspection fees and tonnage are both mentioned in regulation and both have different definitions, though used interchangeably by many during conversation. The inspection fees are monies collected by the department and are assessed based on the quantity of feed sold or distributed. The fee is paid by the business that is first to distribute or sell the feed in or into the state of Wisconsin. Tonnage is the quantity of feed itself. Inspection fees depend on the amount of tonnage a licensee reports. The cumul cumulative quantity of reportable tons are calculated and then inspection fees are determined based on state law. A minimum fee of $50 applies to any, any quantity of tons reported between zero and 200 tons. For quantities greater than 200 tons, an inspection fee of 25 cents per ton applies to the total amount of feed feed reported. If these numbers feel a little new, it is because they were written in state law in 2017 and took effect starting January 1st, 2018 for commercial feed distributions. Next, Stephanie Stotts will provide the regulatory terms and definitions that are relevant to tonnage reporting requirements. This slide displays the differences between feed types and feed label types. 
We're going to spend some extra time on this slide because a good understanding of feed types will help you correctly prepare the annual tonnage report. We'll go into why the feed types are important to tonnage reporting on the next few slides. As you can see from this chart, in regulation, we have four kinds of feed types, custom mixed, pet food, single ingredients, and mill formulated feed. Let's go through the definitions for the feed types before we cover label types. Our first feed type is custom mixed feed. Earlier on slide seven, we discussed the licensing exemption for manufacturers that solely produce custom mixed feed using ingredients labeled by other licensed manufacturers. In regulatory terms, the definition of custom mixed feeds differs a bit from the way the phrase is used in industry. In industry, a custom mixed feed could refer to a feed formula that was de developed by the mill, a third party nutritionist, or the customer themselves. The regulatory definition of a custom mixed feed is limited to feeds mixed at the customer's request using quantities specifically directed by the customer. Pet foods are generally labeled under a standard set of requirements and are specific to the foods and treats for dogs and cats. Other animals maintained in or near a household for companionship, like iguanas, parrots, and hamsters, are considered specialty pets. In Wisconsin, foods for specialty pets are considered livestock feed and regulated just like mill formulated cattle and swine feed. Single ingredients are feed ingredients that are not yet mixed and are not considered raw agricultural commodities or grains, such as corn, oats, and soybeans. Vitamins, minerals, and other types of ingredients all fall into the single ingredient feed category. In addition, single ingredients include most byproducts from the human food manufacturing industry, such as cheese trimmings and carcass offal. offal. That brings us to the mill formulated feeds. These are feeds that were formulated by a representative of the feed mill, a nutritionist or other employee. It includes four floor stocked feeds that are held in inventory for any customer that ventures in to buy the feed, as well as feeds formulated for a specific animal producer. If your mill has one or more nutritionists on staff and the nutritionists develop formulas for livestock feeds for specific customers, those feeds are mill formulated feeds. They are customer specific feeds where an employee of the mill developed the formula for just that one individual customer. That leads us to how feed types are labeled. In this presentation, we will just mention the label types in an effort to help those preparing the annual tonnage report understand that just looking at the label may not be enough information for tonnage reporting. Custom mixed feeds, remember those are the ones that the customer requested with specific ingredient inclusion rates per the customer, are to be labeled in the custom mix format. A custom mix format tag is a line by line line itemized invoice listing each individual ingredient by brand name and the inclusion rate of that ingredient. Pet foods are labeled according to a standardized format. Remember that pet foods are only those foods or treats intended for dogs or cats. Foods intended for specialty pets are regulated under livestock requirements for mill formulated feeds. Similarly, single ingredient feeds are labeled according to a standardized format called the branded format. A branded format label is a standard tag we're used to seeing on livestock and other feeds, such as an index card sized piece of paper sewn into the seam of the bag. The bottom feed type on this slide, mill formulated feed, can either be for any customer as a floor stock feed or a mill formulated feed might be for one customer. A mill formulated feed when developed as a floor stock feed must be labeled in the branded format we just discussed. A mill formulated feed developed for a specific individual customer can be labeled at the customer's option, either in a branded format or a custom mix format. It is important to point out that the phrasing branded labels or branded feeds isn't something you'll find in regulation. Regulation basically points to what we call the branded format label as a commercial fee label format. Well, since all feeds we look at is technically commercial feed, in order to provide a level of distinction between feed label formats in Wisconsin, we call the standardized label on most retail feeds a branded format label. 
Just a quick reminder, as you think of questions, you can enter them in the chat box and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. We've reserved about 20 minutes at the end of our allotted time to take your questions. Let's review the feed types again and include some industry known terms that are not defined in regulation because they are important to tonnage reporting. The four phrases on this slide are also defined in the frequently asked questions document that can be downloaded from the DATCAP website. Heather will go through the location of our downloadable guidance documents with you towards the end of our presentation today. Commercial feed is any product or material used as a feed or feed ingredient for animals, except for the following four items, whole unmixed grains, whole unmixed ground grains, materials such as hay and straw, and meat and other carcass materials. Branded or floor stocked feed includes the feed that is manufactured and stocked to sell to any unspecified customer. Custom mixed feed is any feed manufactured at the specific request of the animal producer using the amounts of ingredients the animal producer requests. Custom mixed feed includes feed formulated by a third party nutritionist and manufactured by the mill. Mill formulated feed is a feed developed for a specific customer by a mill employee and manufactured by the mill. Mill formulated feed includes branded or floor stocked feeds. It is important to become familiar with these phrases and definitions for tonnage reporting purposes related to grains. A person needs to be able to separate custom mixed feeds from the mill formulated feeds in order to determine if the grains used in the said feeds are reportable or exempt. When it is time to report tonnage, any processed grains used in a custom mixed feed are reportable. Keep in mind when we use the word grains, we are referring to any grain defined in the U.S. grain standards. For tonnage, processed grains are those grains that were physically processed or chemically processed prior to inclusion in a feed. Physically processed grain examples include ground corn or rolled oats. Chemically processed grains include steam flaked corn or roasted soybeans. Again, processed grains in a custom mixed feed are reportable under commercial feed tonnage requirements. Then there are feeds that contain whole unprocessed grains. Custom mixed feeds containing whole unprocessed grains fall under a different set of requirements with regard to tonnage reporting. The whole unprocessed grains in a custom mixed feed are exempt from tonnage reporting. Once more, unprocessed whole grains in a custom feed are exempt from tonnage reporting, whereas processed grains in custom feed are subject to tonnage reporting. In mill formulated feeds, grains are subject to reporting and inspection feeds, regardless of their physical state when added to the feed. All grains used in mill formulated feed, whether physically processed, chemically processed, or unprocessed, is reportable and subject to inspection fees. Grain bank grain is the grain a producer owns and stores at a commercial facility for later use. Grain bank grain is not reportable as commercial feed tonnage because grain bank grain is not commercial feed. Grain bank grain is a personal asset to the producer. Let's review the content of the last five slides just to clear the mud. Whole unmixed grains in a custom mixed feed are exempt from reporting. Processed grains in a custom mixed feed are subject to reporting. All grains in mill formulated feeds are subject to reporting. Branded feeds and floor stock feeds are mill formulated feeds. Therefore, all grains in branded and floor stock feeds are subject to reporting. Grain bank grain is exempt from reporting because it is not commercial feed. And last, any grains bagged and sold as unmixed seeds, whether whole or ground, are exempt from reporting. I, I acknowledge this is by far the most confusing piece to tonnage reporting, and if any of this is still unclear, please make a note to ask us about it at the end or type them in the chat box. Any suggestions you have for what we can do to make this less confusing is always welcome. For the last part of our webinar, Heather Bartley will go through the same, some examples of how to report commercial feed types according to different business operations. 
Heather, this is this is Robbie. I just want to make a comment. There's a couple of comments in the chat regarding the presentation. Can you verify that your presentation is being shared, please? Yes. Thanks. All right. Our first example is a dairy plant, a human food manufacturing facility. The plant packages cheese trimmings and off-spec cheese to distribute to a mink farm as animal feed. The cheese byproduct first officially enters animal feed when distributed by the dairy plant to the mink farm. Therefore, the dairy plant is the first to distribute the animal feed and assumes the tonnage reporting responsibility for the cheese byproduct. The dairy plant holds an animal feed license, reports all tonnage for the cheese byproduct distributed in Wisconsin, and remits inspection fees as appropriate. The dairy plant does not report tons distributed into states other than Wisconsin on the Wisconsin tonnage report, but it is responsible for reporting those tons to the other states as applicable. Single ingredient manufacturers essentially report all of the tons they distribute in or into Wisconsin as they are the first to distribute their single ingredients as animal feed in this state. There are many examples, a few that you see on this slide. When a quarry processes and packages calcium carbonate for animal feed, each distribution of the animal feed is reportable. Similarly, the same idea applies to an ethanol producer for its dried or wet distiller's grains, a soybean plant for its soybean meal or soybean oil distributed for animal feed, and for a renderer that produces any bone meal, meat and bone meal, meat meal, feather meal, etc. Finally, the previous example of the dairy plant distributing cheese byproduct is another example of a single ingredient commercial feed distribution. In this example, a facility manufactures direct fed microorganisms, also known as probiotics. Probiotics are defined for use in animal feeds and are subject to reporting. Typically, probiotics are a simple mix containing a handful of ingredients such as one or more microorganisms, a substrate, and or a carrier. Manufacturers distributing probiotics in or into Wisconsin shall be licensed and report all tons of the animal feed grade probiotics distributed. Some probiotic manufacturers also produce human food or edible grade probiotics. Those edible probiotics are not reportable as animal feed. We see a growing trend with dog treat manufacturing in private residences. These folks tend to purchase their ingredients from a local grocery store. Most ingredients at the time of purchase from the grocery store are intended to be edible or human food grade. The dog treat manufacturers buying ingredients at the grocery store are transitioning the edible ingredients to animal feed grade ingredients at the time they produce the dog treats. As a result, all dog treat distributions are reportable and subject to inspection fees. That being said, most private residence dog treat manufacturers do not exceed the minimum fee for distributions, which is applicable to distributions of 200 tons or less in a calendar year. While dog treat manufacturers have low tonnage quantities, the tonnage report is still expected to identify the exact quantity and type of tons distributed, such as one ton of pet food, the category we use for dog treats. A feed mill that manufactures feed, as well as retails feed from other manufacturers, incorporates a deeper analysis of the feeds distributed in Wisconsin to complete the Wisconsin Commercial Feed Tonnage Report. First, the feed mill can separate out distributions of retail feeds as not reportable. The retail feed distributions are the responsibility of the third party that was first to distribute the retail feeds in or into Wisconsin. Next, the feed mill can separate out all feed ingredients it purchased from other licensed feed manufacturers or suppliers. The feed ingredients were already reported by the labeler or supplier when the feed ingredients were first distributed in or into Wisconsin. In other words, the feed mill can assume any feed ingredients it purchases were already first distributed by another entity and the feed mill does not need to report them again. 
Last, the feed mill needs to analyze the grains or raw agricultural commodities it purchased to use in, the man in manufacturing commercial feed. In deciding whether grains distributed are reportable or not, if we rewind back to what Stephanie was telling us, a feed mill needs to remember that unmixed whole seeds are exempt from the definition of commercial feed and unmixed physically whole seeds are exempt from the definition of commercial feed. Any package of unmixed whole seeds or any package of unmixed physically changed whole seeds are not reportable. For tonnage reporting, a feed mill will want to assemble the quantity of custom mixed feed tons that incorporated processed grains. Remember, custom mixed feeds are the feeds that the animal producer formulated him or herself or that a third party for formulated. Custom mixed feeds do not include formulations developed by one of the feed mill employees. The processed grains in the custom mixed feeds are reportable tons and subject to inspection fees. The custom mixed feeds incorporating whole grains that are not processed can be reviewed as well. However, the feed mill can omit the tons of whole grains in the custom mixed feeds from the tonnage report since they are not reportable. Last, the feed mill can assemble tons of mill formulated feeds or the feeds formulated by a mill employee. From those cumulative tons, the mill will want to only report the processed grains and the whole grains that were in the feeds distributed. The processed grains and the whole grains in mill formulated feeds are reportable and subject to inspection fees. Let's review that one more time in summary. For all mill formulated feeds formulated by an employee of the mill, the processed grains and the whole grains in the mill formulated feed are reportable on the tonnage report and subject to inspection fees. For all custom mixed feeds formulated by the animal producer or a third party nutritionist for a specific animal producer, only the processed grains are reportable and subject to inspection fees. The whole grains in the custom mixed feeds are exempt from reporting. You will find additional guidance and this webinar recording once available on our website, datcp.wi.gov. In addition, written instructions for completing both the electronic and the hard copy versions of the tonnage form are available. If needed, you'll find blank license applications and tonnage reporting forms there as well. Thank you for attending today's webinar. At this time, we'd like to take any questions that you may have. First, we'll address questions in the chat box. Our first question is, our company manufactures and imports Himalayan pink salt livestock products. There is no chemical processing, 100% organic salt. All products are ready for sale upon arrival. Do we simply report our imported tonnage on an annual basis? That's correct. So that'd be similar to a company that mines calcium carbonate, right? Everything is a single ingredient. It is a first distribution as it enters Wisconsin. So that is reportable. So I'll address the Himalayan pink salt first and let me know if you lose me. <laughs> um, so that would be similar to calcium carbonate. So it's a mined ingredient. It's a single ingredient. As it first enters the state of Wisconsin, it's reportable. If what it is is a pure Himalayan pink salt, then Yes, all of it is reportable when it's distributed into Wisconsin. If you're distributing it in Minnesota, we don't want to know about that here. Uh, and then the soybean oil question, as long as it is being distributed for animal feed, it's reportable. If it is soybean oil distributed for a different purpose, we don't need to know about that, even if it's entering the state. We only want to know about what you're distributing for animal feed 
And again, as long as it's in or into Wisconsin, it is reportable. Soybean oil is reportable. I think we were at the bird seed question. Uh, the raw agricultural commodities are reportable by the company that's asking the question because they're not commercial feed at the time of purchase. They're considered raw agricultural commodities, which are exempt from the definition of commercial feed. On the bird seed packages that are already labeled product when you purchase it, that was reported at the time you purchased it by the entity that's labeling it or that was first to distribute it in or into the state of Wisconsin. And then can you address the uh, bagged whole corn? They purchased bagged whole corn and cracked corn for deer feed. Uh, and the question is, is the corn and cracked corn reportable on the commercial tonnage report? If that product was labeled as feed, it would have already been reported by the entity you purchased that whole and cracked corn from because it was labeled with an intended use as feed. If it was just whole seed corn with no label on it, then it has any number of purposes and it would not be considered commercial feed at that point. So then it's on you to report it. That makes sense. The ground corn would have been feed when you purchased it. If it's packaged, that should have been reported when you purchased it. Because you can't plant ground corn. And the next question is regarding who pays the tonnage fees based on the invoicing and the formula or based on the formula. And it starts out, do we have to differentiate how we pay tonnage fees by who sends us the formula? And either by our contract salespeople, which are only contracted to the company, or by the salespeople directly employed by the co-op. Yeah. Yes. So they're, if they're considered an employee, then it's a mill formulated feed because the employee is a representative of the mill. If your contract sales folks are operating as employees of the mill, it is still a mill formulated feed. Think of it this way, a custom mixed feed doesn't have a representation by the feed mill for the nutritive values of the feed, whereas a mill formulated feed is represented as far as the nutrient values of the feed by the feed mill. You may not disclose the mill formulated feed nutritive values on the label if you're labeling it in the custom mixed format, but if one of your employees was working with a farm to develop a ration, there's usually a ration sheet that has the anticipated nutritive values or the forecasted nutritive values. That's still a representation by the feed mill for the nutrient values of the feed. If you still are unclear on that, we can have a side conversation about that. I mean, that's kind of a, that can get to be a lengthy conversation. And the next question is similar to the uh, Himalayan pink salt, uh, the company posing that question, but it starts out as we manufacture products in Europe and sell products in Wisconsin. They are a single active product with a carrier. Similar to the Himalayan pink salt company, we simply report our import. And the question is, we simply report our imported tonnage report. And then if so, how do I classify it on the report? Right, so um, feed ingredients that are in a product distributed into Wisconsin, where those ingredients are originating in, originating in Europe, have never been distributed in or into Wisconsin before. So yes, you would report all of that tonnage. And how do you classify it? Uh, it depends on what it is. You want to use the categories on the front. It's on the front of the tonnage report this year. And if it is a direct fed microorganism, you would put it in the applicable category. If it's a corn product, you would put it in that category. If it is um, a blended cattle feed, you would put a plug it into that category. So it kind of depends on what it is you're distributing and if you don't want to go through that in this conversation you're more than welcome to contact us 
on the side and we can work that out together if you're not sure, sure where it classifies. And the next question is, we are a co-manufacturer for a human food powder. The animal feed that is produced from our process is taken back by the customer. Uh, the customer's name is on the label. Do we report this or is the customer responsible for reporting this uh, as animal feed? So I'm, I think what I understand here is you're doing a contract for service. If I'm incorrect, please write down our email address and give us uh, or shoot us a message so we can contact you on the side. But if you're doing a contract for service, all you're doing is providing the service. The ingredient distribution or the feed distribution is a transaction through the customer, so the customer will take care of that. Uh, if I'm misunderstanding your question, please contact us on the side though. And so far, this looks like the last uh, chat box question. Do you want us to report all tons that are distributed by our company and only pay for first distributed products we sell or only report first distributed products? Only only report what is first distributed by you. And that way we have a clean data set of the amount of feed tonnage that's out in the state. We don't want duplicative data. Thank you for asking that. And that was so far that was the last chat box question. Um, we can open the phone lines now for um, additional questions. You are welcome to either raise your hands if you're not sure how to unmute yourself. Otherwise, you can unmute yourself in the participant panel and ask your question. OK. I haven't gotten any, uh, we haven't gotten any hands raised or any questions asked. We haven't gotten any additional um, uh, chat box questions. Um, our contact information uh, is embedded within the uh, presentation. Uh, so for now, that wraps up our presentation. Uh, one last reminder is to reference our website at datcp.wi.gov for guidance documents and a recording. Thank you again for attending our webinar, and we will end the presentation at this time and wish you a wonderful rest of your day.